Hello, my name is Indy, and because I can't be there with you today, I've made this video about binding. My research tells me that binding is a practice done not only by 21st century trans men, but also by gender variant people going back for hundreds of years. Even cis men and cis women at times feel more comfortable with their chests when binding. Stories passed down about men who were born female and women who defied expectations of femininity let us know we are not alone, that trans men, butches, and non-binary folk have gone before us. In the present, we know that while binding is usually more of an art than a science, certain modern inventions make binding easier, more effective, and more comfortable. The basic processes at work in binding include concealment, compression, and creating a different shape. Most binders or binding methods use a combination of these. Compression minimizes tissue, decreasing the amount of visible curvature. It usually also reduces movement. Concealment involves disguising the chest with clothing. Creating a different shape can involve repositioning the chest tissue, or using a binder to place a flat panel on top of the tissue, creating a flatter silhouette. The most effective methods of binding do use a combination of techniques. For example, wearing a compression garment, an undershirt, and a structured jacket will compress and then conceal the chest, which is likely to hide it. Keeping this principle in mind, remember that a fancy, expensive binder is not the only way to bind. There are a variety of commercial binders on the market. From vendors like Underworks and Tea Kingdom, there are a few common types. Pullover binders generally use compression to bind breasts. They are made from stretchy fabrics and may have multiple layers of fabric in the front. Underworks offers some of the most famous pullover binders, like the 997. These can be hard to get into, and some work only about as well as a sports bra. However, other pullover binders, like the Underworks 997, are consistently described as effective by many customers. Binders can also have a closure by zipper, velcro, or hook and eye cl clasp. Zipper binders can be difficult to fasten. Velcro binders pose a risk of irritation to the skin if the fabric travels and the sharp velcro comes into contact with skin. However, Velcro does have an advantage in that you can fasten it tighter at the bottom than at the top to help keep everything in place. The little I have said about commercially available binders does little to impart the variety in vendor locations, materials, and prices. If you are interested in purchasing a binder, I recommend researching to see what binder is recommended by others for your body type and needs. There are also a variety of other products and do-it-yourself methods for binding. There are two bra methods. The first is simply to wear a very strong compression sports bra. The second is to layer sports bras with one worn backwards. The pantyhose method involves making a binder from a pair of pantyhose by cutting off the legs and making a hole in the crotch for your head. The yoga pants method which I have utilized, is to find a pair of yoga or running pants with a pant leg that will accommodate your chest. I took a second pant leg and sewed a panel to the front to provide additional compression and wore it doubled up to create a flatter silhouette. A back support belt or waist trimmer can also be worn with care as a binder. Compression shirts are effective for small-chested folk. You can find compression shirts with um, men's sportswear. Post-surgical compression garments, such as those marketed for mastectomy patients, can also be used as binders. The t-shirt method, which is a tried-and-true method, involves wearing a tight sports bra or tank top and layering successively looser shirts on top. If you are planning to make or buy a binder, it is important to know how to take your measurements. To do this, you will need a tape measure, measuring tape, or a string and a ruler. There are two measurement methods that I'm going to show you. The first is measuring for your bra size. 
your first measurement is around the upper part of your chest, just under your armpits. If this is an even number, this is your band size. If this is an odd number, add one inch to get your band size. The second measurement is around the fullest part of your chest, usually right around nipple level. To make this easier, you can wear a sports bra. To get your cup size, take the difference of these two measurements. If it is less than one inch, it is a double A cup. If it is one inch, it is an A cup. For every size after that, an increase of one inch is an increase of one cup size. So that an A cup is one inch, a B cup is two inches, and a C cup is three inches. The other method that I'm going to show you is a method of measuring your chest size for ordering a binder. The first measurement that you should take should be under your breasts, flat against your ribs. Record this number in case it is needed for your binder ordering. The next measurement you should take will be around the fullest part of your chest. This is your chest size, and um, this is your chest size, and you can do this wearing a sports bra or a binder. Sometimes it can be helpful to wear a binder while taking this measurement when you're going to order a binder. Binding can be a big relief, physically and mentally. Even for individuals who bind and don't pass, binding can substantially alleviate dysphoria by minimizing the appearance of the chest, minimizing motion, and changing the way clothing fits. It can also literally take a weight off your shoulders by redistributing the weight of your chest across your body. However, while the benefits can be truly priceless, there are health risks involved. Binding poses both short-term and long-term health risks. Short-term health risks include, but are not limited, to skin irritation, rash, bruising, restricted breathing, back injury, fracturing of ribs, restricted blood flow, and lung collapse associated with rib fracture. Long-term health risks include deformation of tissue, compression of rib cage, damage to muscle tissue, pneumonia due to fluid buildup in lungs, increased risk of lymphatic and breast cancers, blood clots, and decreased lung capacity. It is important to minimize these risks. Avoid binding for more than 8 to 12 hours per day. Do not use binders that are too tight, which do not allow your chest muscles and ribs to expand. Do not use binders which prevent your back or sh shoulder muscles from moving. Reduce behaviors that may compound risk to lungs, such as smoking. Do not wear tight, stiff binders during exercise. Never bind with cling wrap, duct tape, or ace bandages. These symptoms could indicate a collapsed lung. They include sharp, stabbing chest pain or pressure that is worse upon breathing, pain that may radiate out to the back or shoulder, feeling out of breath, and dry cough. Other symptoms to watch out for include dizziness, loss of vision, difficulty breathing, and a persistent cough or wheezing they may indicate that you are binding too tight or too often. If you notice these symptoms, you should stop binding immediately and seek medical care if your symptoms do not stop within a few minutes. I hope that this video is helpful to you. Always remember, safety first when binding. Thank you for watching.